What is up, down, and sideways, all you beautiful individuals? Welcome back to League Online. My name is Eric Flying, a little Han Solo on today's epi as both LCS and LCK playoffs take one step closer to crowning a summer split champion and kicking off the week in the LCS, the most interesting compelling matchup for me for the entire week we got team liquid versus evil geniuses even more so than that winner's bracket side of things because energy and cloud nine they've both already clinched a spot at worlds they both have an extra life going down to the losers bracket this is do or die win or go home guarantee yourself a top four spot which doesn't guarantee you a spot at worlds but guarantees you at bare minimum a best of five opportunity against the fourth seed from the LEC to go to that world championship. And I will say I have never seen such a heavy mental advantage than what we saw in this Team Liquid Evil Geniuses matchup. And didn't think EG would be the team to look so unbelievably tilted. The theme of it started in game one, and it was all about summit in the top side eg throwing absolutely everything in the arsenal to try and take this guy down and not being able to do so now the first misplay or mismanagement of diving against summit in the first one more so summit playing well team liquid being there to back him up so full credit to them uh, i mean that immediately gave them a 3k gold lead and revenge's atrox could never become the absolutely brain dead busted champion that he is right now because summit became an absolute menace on the jacks he eventually grabs a triple kill here as well but a snowball run out of control for team liquid then in the second game, this is one of the most egregious dives you will ever see out of EG. The timing is just, this should have been so simple if Revenge just waits until the wave crashes in and then easy kill, they all survive at low health and nothing happens. But because Revenge goes early, then Shaden takes two turret shots, he ends up going down, Summit even survives. This isn't even super well played out of TL, it's just terribly played out of EG, although I will give big credits to Piosic for the blind hex flash over the wall into the turret to kill uh, Jojo Piet to grab yet another kill over to TL, but ugh, absolute disaster and they just, they look tilted to have that play to be so out of sorts and miscommunicating on such a important matchup, just absolute disaster class out of EG Team Liquid eventually, you know, completely snowballs that one out of control. The 20 minute win in that second game. First two games, complete stomps in the favor of Team Liquid. People are spamming emotes left, right, and center across the board. Uh, just maximum amounts of disrespect. And listen, when you're styling on a team like TL was in those first two games, spam all the emotes you want. APA's talking trash. I'm just assuming he's probably talking trash in all chat for a guy who's only been in the league for a month. I love the confidence that he exudes. But credit to Evil Geniuses. There wasn't much credit to be given. But at least in Game 3, they finally show some signs of life. We get to see Jojo Pion on the Tristana, which a much more aggressive pick out of him. And finally, this Baron fight, EG decides to wake up show up for the series there was no subbing out shaden played uh even going down 0-2 armeo was not subbed in ends up being an ace over to eg to get the game in their control and then no looking back from there unforgiven got unbelievably ridiculously stupid fed on the kaisa in this game and obviously we know kaisa at the very forefront of adc's meta right now even though she's building ap you know most of the time but the eg bounce back they will not be swept kept their season alive and unfortunately you'd think maybe the momentum would carry over to them in that fourth game wasn't the case it was the bounce back for tl already a two plus k gold lead at 15 minutes um summit again an absolute menace apa we saw the patented zigs pick out of him uh earlier in the series the nico comes out in this one and he looked very comfortable check out that flank from yawn on the tristana by the way that has got to be one of the highlight plays of the series a flanking 80 carry that comes in and doesn't immediately get blown up and die uh, actually able to do something also got core jj's Tarek, which is always a treat to see he had 
for a guy who's been underperforming for the last full year, basically, had a very solid series against EG, but the mental advantage, the mental boom was already there for EG. They're even getting Aatrox in these games, the pick that we saw Revenge completely annihilate Team Solo mid on earlier in the playoffs, but never came to fruition in this series. I know the fraud allegations are something we've talked about, people have talked about for evil geniuses. This series didn't do them any good trying to dismay those rumors and topside summit proved why he is a former mvp of the lcs why he's an all pro top laner again this split because he completely had his way obviously made most of the eg roster look a little bit foolish dancing around these turret dives but just in the 1v1 matchup against revenge absolutely had his way if you're a fan of the lcs team liquid is the better team you want to see potentially representing internationally and even though he's a rookie APA already got the banter on point, saying EU is trash. Doesn't matter who they match up against if they do have to go to that uh, fourth seed world's qualification best of five matchup between the fourth seed out of the LEC. But for now, they're moving on to the next round. We'll play the winner of that e, uh, dig Golden Guardians losers bracket that gets going later in the week. Back to the winner's side. We have a rare and red alert, you know, let the sirens go. We got an LCK Fiesta. Gen G and Honda Life. Remember, we're going to keep beating this one home. KT chose to play T1 in that first round match for playoffs for them. They could have picked Honda Life. They chose T1. So let's see what Honda Life has in this matchup against Gen G. Game one action. Um, the story is Aatrox. Are you familiar with that pick? I don't know if anyone's talked about him. Uh, you're just waiting 13 minutes for Dorn to come in, grab two kills, and then they feed him another one on King and Zorn a little bit later. And this guy gets so unbelievably fed on the Aatrox that the game's over. I mean, the damage is so silly on this Dustblade build, even when he's not getting fed. But these rare games where you do see him get un believably fed it's already now a dragon soul for gen g doran is just waiting biding his time to come in and start absolutely slam dunking everybody which guess what that is exactly what he does in this fight his viper is left alone to the wolves life surround hanging but look at this damage that's a three shot three shots to ad carry even with the ulti out of kaisa which as we know is a silly shield when she's building that way but uh pfft, doran I mean, I'm not going to give too much credit to Doran because Aatrox is so absolutely insane right now, but uh, pretty solid performance in that first game to get things out of control. Game two is where stuff is a little bit spicy because Hollow Life bounces back. They've got a Baron. They were in control. They had a solid early game. Uh, Gen G felt like they were trying to force some of these fights. This is where the true fiesta started coming out in this series chobi's flashing over the wall pays thinks he can at least 1v1 viper but of course that does not end up being the case hama life looking good to tie things up 4k lead just grab a second baron you've already got an infernal soul 5k gold lead and peanut walked in and smited it and got the steal and somehow genji just completely turns around the team fight king and pop the stopwatch great you're gonna wait until you respawn and then die again Hollywood Life's in control for 29 minutes of the game and 45 seconds is all it takes for Gen G to steal the Baron and just run it down mid. They take, I think, three turrets to close out the game. Absolutely zero business winning this second game to go up 2-0. Got to be unbelievably deflating for Hanwha Life, who, were, again, spent 20-plus minutes building up this sizable lead only for it to be taken away. And you'd think... They would be tilted into oblivion, and to be honest, the first 10, 15, 20 minutes of Game 3 it looked like they might be tilted uh, out of oblivion as the first blood went the way already of Gen G. Uh, Peanut was invading and was able to take down Grizzly with the help of Chobi. Then they grabbed three more kills around the mid lane, and somehow, on with life, able to get back into the game, and then all of a sudden, we've got... Peanut popping Rift Heralds into the Baron Pit, failing flashes. You got to support Rakan, who ends up stealing the Baron. Uh, well, not stealing, securing the Baron for his team with the Summoner Spellbook. And this is full-fledged LCS-level Fiesta going on here. And this time, it's Gen.G 
who are in control. They have an ocean soul, look ready to close this game out. All of a sudden, Humble Life gets a Baron Steel. They find an amazing pick from life. They grab three kills, eventually gonna add another as they chase down Pays. And all of a sudden you're saying this is a mirror image of what we saw in game two as now Humble Life wins one fight and they run it down mid. They want to close this game out, but unfortunately for them, they didn't have the same secret sauce that Gen.G had in that second game. As the respawns come in, the poppy copter knocks them out. Kingen eventually gets cleaned up on that Aatrox. Not able to end the game. That ends up being a Baron over to Hanwha Life. And then after they catch out Grizzly, they force this Elder Dragon. The Zap almost gets it, but now you've got an Ocean Soul, Elder Dragon, and a Baron. Uh, or a Baron freshly just ended. There's absolutely no chance for Hanwha to defend this game. The somewhat miracle comeback not meant to be as i'm definitely not going to call it a clean sweep but it is a sweep nonetheless for gen g to move to the next round book a date a date with t1 as that matchup is an inevitability when it comes to the lck playoffs han will life even though kt didn't choose him they're gonna play him in that loser's bracket round so by no means clean, but Genji obviously clearly the better team on the day. Sloppy across the boards, but sometimes that sloppy chaos is where some teams absolutely thrive. Can't wait to see Genji. I thought they might kind of just prove that they are leaps and bounds above Hanwha Life. Kind of did, even though it was messy. Super excited for them to match up against T1. We'll see if Hanwha can bounce back in that KT matchup, but that is it today. For League Unlock, my name is Eric. Thank you, you beautiful people, for watching as always, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.